Hello you! How are we doing folks? It's Sunday night and uh, Diego and Lightfoot are here for your listening delight. And as the wee pun there might suggest, we are here to tackle a double dunter of a short trip outing for the late Trevor Baxter and his merry chum and Philip. Christopher Benjamin. That's not what I said, but thank you for the update. Oh, the sorry. Jago and Lightfoot revival. Um, this was done in two parts, spread over uh, March and April of this year, I believe. And we had Jago and Lightfoot encounter both not only the gentlemen of the dice, uh, but the 10th and 11th doctors, respectively. So, what did you think about this little outing for everyone's favourite Victorian sloths? We're about to find out, but before we get to that, let's get to this. It's your panel for this evening. It's Monday morning. He has the thunder. He's down under. AJ, how about you, man? Hey, guys. How are you? Get to see you, mate. Down in the bells of hell at Texas, Tim Wells. Timbo, how's it going, man? What up? Hey, man. The tart from Tottenham, Mr. Phil Parcher. How's it going, mate? Firstly, I'm not a tart, and I am in Tottenham. Hello. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I don't want people to know me you have. And other way from NYC, probably sitting there watching my Jets ball again. It's well. How doing, well? Hey, nah, they're going in overtime, and he's a uh, puck cutting hand. Gee, there you go, man. So, yeah, guys, the Diego and Lightfoot revival. Uh, decent little outing. Um, with both the guys on double narration duty, regaling their uh, certain events within the story. <clears throat> While um, Lightfoot's in Greece, uh, Jago is dealing with spiders in his uh, Regency theatre. Oh, my. And we have two incarnations of the Doctor to boot. So where to begin? Opening thoughts. All right, AJ, opening thoughts on the Jago and Lightfoot revival. A small lecture to an intellectual club goes awry. What do you reckon, man? Um, I really like this story. I like the double-handedness where they both sort of tell their part of the story um, from their perspective. Mm -hmm. I also like the fact that two Doctors showed up um you know for the story as well they don't really explain why 11's there but we ex we know why 10 is there because he's dying he wants to say goodbye to his friends and all that sort of stuff and i yep. like the whole concept of the um other yet uh dice men being, hey boys. Yeah. yeah being creatures of um who give you luck and then they'll take your yeah. life away after a, a time mm. which is a really cool idea Creatures of fortune, I believe, yeah. All right, Timbo, what do you reckon for us? What will double out in me? Open thoughts? Uh, it's really good. It's a lot of fun. It's um, it's more of a companion chronicle than the, the short trips, the format, I mean. It, mm, uh, yeah. I would say because your short trip usually is just a single narrator. This time, you know, this is more of a, I mean, you even get a a, a cameo from, from uh, Ellie at the end, which is... Mm -hmm. which she found up for a while, yeah, she up a point, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, it's it's cool that they, you know, if they if they don't have the doctors in, they can still do a story about them, and that's, mm. what, that's this, this is where you get one with 10 and 11. I, I think, to your point, AJ, though, actually 11 is just following up like he said he would, like 10 said he would, uh, and, and fixing the problem late in, in his time, you know, mm. but I mean, as far as that, that's that's pretty cool, too, how it all comes together. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so, so why, what, obviously 10 is, is at the start of events and 11 is at the end of the events trying to, you know, wrap the thing up, I suppose. Un unfinished business, I believe, with the term coined in the thing. Philip, opening thoughts for you in this one? Um, I thought it was all right. I agree with everybody else. It's, it's a nice little uh, joint together of two doctors. What I, I, what I did find a little bit confusing, I, I got used to it after a while, is I didn't know which um, Jago and Life, which um, doctors they were the respective um, adventurers were weird until they you know, they say the, the young one and then they got the older one. So I realised who who is with who. And I like the idea, like everybody says, about the um, uh, lieutenant doctor who's at the end of his life and he's just saying, you know, hello everybody, I'm, I'm off. I'm just going to spend a little time with you. And um, But it was weird. You know when they, they, they both meet up at, both at the theatre? Yeah, we were where they were in that hall place. Mm -hmm. the concert. I, would have, I would have liked to say, um, the lieutenant doctor to say, oh, to his um, later self, I'm dying, and the other one says, I know you are, because I'm going to be you next. That kind of thing. That would have been a nice little coda, and your, your future and safe parents, that kind of thing. That would have been nice. Really done that with section seven. I know, but it would be nice to see that happen in that little short trip. Um, the most, <coughs> the spider thing, at first I thought that was to do with the Ragnos at first, the way it was being described. Mm. And obviously, 
that's what that's, that's what threw me up about hope. Oh, that's rack dust. And then you had the thing with the cowboy coming out of the sea. The yeah. I thought that was kind of weird and wonderful. Um, they got, um, I think they got the um, Kenny Doctor down to cheat away. Um, I think it's, 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 it's the way he spoke to Kenneth Lyons, it was very much like Kenneth. Trevor Baxter. Trevor Baxter then. He sounded very much very tempty, whereas the other one, the, the Matt Smithy one, was a little bit off key, but still. But you still got the uh, waving the Sonic around with uh, the, the, the Smithy one down to a T. Yeah, it's it squeaky bum time, my magic wand. Yeah. Um, yeah. There you go. Well, what do you reckon, mate, on the thoughts? Uh, this is a great story. I mean, yeah, it more, it, it, you can say this is a companion chronicle because it does add up to an hour. Um, um, the funny thing is, uh, to us, is a little bit of a sad thing because this is one of the last ones with uh, Trevor Baxter um, doing audio. Yep. Because we're, we're still not aware about the the Jake on Life with box that is supposed to be released next month. Yeah, still near what doing that. It's definitely in the can, but I, I guess we're just holding off for a while. Maybe. Yeah. So that's 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 yeah. what makes it sad. And uh, it was it also a little bit sad because we. Because of this story, like like Texas mentioned, that the tenth doctor is saying his goodbye to his companions like that. So this, so in a sad way, this is the only time the tenth doctor would meet Jago on Lightfoot. So like you know, so that's a little bit of a sad thing. The the what's funny that the uh, the creatures they um they really the same thing is that they were using uh like a chameleon thing to make themselves look humanoid, and then later on you see them at, in the true form because they was absorbing the energy. From um, from the two guys to to feed on them, so to speak. So that that was a really good. And, and as for um, for the wish, wishing for the directors again, you know, go back listen to those those two part eight doctor audios if you want them to hit, you want to listen about them. It, um, it, it, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, knowing that um, we I knew for a fact that Lisa Bauman was gonna do one little thing because she is directing that story at that, so her voice was gonna pop up here and there. So you know, I knew it was gonna be just one quick line for her. So that was that was that was an automatic like that. But uh, the 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 good thing about it was real good. What stands out about it, the story. Um, even though <laughs> these two guys talk too bloody much with their words, mm. when it comes to instead of saying a quick sentence, you know, <laughs> um, the story flows real really, real really good. Especially when in the, in the beginning that they they, they, talk, they try to talk to an audience of on an adventure that they had, mm. and in the end. Everybody get up like, who believed this nonsense? Nobody, man. They just left. They didn't want to hear nothing. Mm. They didn't want to, so they know, in the end, you had to go to the go to the pub and have a drink with the eleventh doctor who's waiting for them there. So you know, it is a good adventure with them. I wish, I how wish they would have um the these two gentlemen um would have had more adventures with their doctors, whichever ones would have been. But you know, not now, and not not that's not going to be so like that. So it's a sad thing because we don't know what's going to happen with these stories that supposedly were recorded. Mm. Yeah, anything done the way new is probably going to be something somewhat of this just with, with um, Christopher Benjamin and his Todd, but I don't know if he did that with his buddy, so uh, there you go. Um, me, yeah, really enjoyable outing. Uh, like the guys have already told, like the fact you get two dollars in there trying to resolve the same issue. Um, even the Scotches get some name check. I know that would be to uh, full chagrin, but um, that gives up a point and, for me there, you know. And, and, and the master. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that, yeah well, that, well, for them, that was after the last box set, wasn't it, with Colin Baker and Jeffrey Beavers in, in their series. So, yeah, uh, we find out it's a year later for them, or it's centuries later for the Doctor. The gentleman in the, in the, in the dice, interesting concept for a villain with the, the, the feed on your life force. Um, but while I did tell you, you've got the chameleon thing, something somewhere that the... The, the fish things and was it Vampires of Venice they used to that to basically yeah. look vampires yeah. and whatnot so you had a, a, a similar type thing there because the 11th Doctor has dealt with that before obviously in his TV run so all in all good outing for these guys it's just a shame that that was probably the last one um, Trevor Baxter recorded because I believe it was recorded in February this year so um, nice way to go I'll be not going to get any more unfortunately Right, guys, anything that stand out for you within this tale? Uh, AJ. Uh, yeah, I like how um, Lightfoot was very uh, slow off the mark to recognize the Doctor, but Jago was just like, oh, yeah, you're the Doctor. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> instantly. He, he seemed to be the smarter one for this story, I thought. I don't know why. But um, 
also the whole thing with um, oh, what was it? Uh, uh, Jago's wording uh, mm. of that time travel, you know, traveling through the chronosphere and yep. the words that he used. It was just beautiful. It was like poetry in motion, his wording. I loved it. Excellent. Tebo, anything stand up for you, boss? Well, I, I thought both actors did a great job uh, doing th their particular doctor mm. uh, as far as, as, as voicing it. I thought that was really cool. And I, I thought it was a good idea that the doctors don't meet each other. I think because more often than not, if you have a multi-doctor story, they make a big deal about how they don't get along and whatnot. And this was a lot simpler. Yeah. Like they don't meet each other in the story. One just picks up where the other left off at a much later date, apparently. Mm -hmm. Although I think he's still hanging. He's probably still hanging around with Amy and Rory at that point. But yeah, um, that was mentioned. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it's. Um, I like too how you know this. I don't know how many times this happens in the Jago and Lightfoots, but it's, it always ends and they just go to the pub for a drink. <laughs> Quite a few times. Yeah. 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 So that's 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 a cool way to end the story. I mean, hey, let's just go have a drink. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was a wee bit disappointed. It was only ginger beer, though. My, 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 my. Uh, there you go. Uh, Candy I've ever written. Good stuff. Well, anything for you, mate? No, I liked that. Uh, um, that um, you know, one of them was going to do some archaeology digging with Gene mm -hmm. Bazemore. You know, that's a come. They had he had that adventure, and what the other one was staying behind and got involved. You know, with the other thing, that, and then and then and the meet up. That's what, yeah. that's what that's what stood out real good about it. And it was funny, um, and the funny at the end of the story, um, nobody mentioned about Jean anymore, so we don't know what happened and or did she find anything in well, the part of it, she was still in Greece, you know. I mean, yeah, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> she was in ruins, so that, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, no, it's not a pretty funny like that. But uh, it's a it's a great it's, it's a great combination with these two with these two guys. But they, they, their stories always stand out. That's the funny yeah, thing about that's, it. You, you, it's just really unfortunate we only get one more box set, boys and girls. Uh, sad, sad times ahead. Um, when we get that, we still don't know. That's in the big big finish's discretion. <clears throat> uh, did I get everybody that I'm always with? One, two, three, four. Is it me? Me. Yeah, you. Oh, sorry, Phil. Really? When you go, huh? Spoil the white guy. Yeah, okay, man. You know, who, yeah. who cares? Uh, well, I, I don't know. I don't know what if there's enemies. The only thing that made me laugh is how um, well, I get them mixed up. Which is the bigger, fatter one? Here you go. Yeah, yeah. Then, when him and uh, Eleven are running away from the um, monster thing, and he's and he's gone about how fit he's feeling, and, and he's fully mm. alive, and he's oh, I'm pumping away. Like, I love it. And go stop, stop. I need a fag or something like that kind of sort of thing. Because if you, you're not used yeah. to. Exertion, so I was looking. I was hoping for that sort of funny bit to come along. Um, I do like the fact that, um, that uh, yeah, like there goes the and Ellie comes on and she kind of so. Oh, that's what I was remembering. The little I like how the the, 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 the harmonica plays a part in the, yep. the melody. Yeah, in the melody thing. If, at the beginning, he picks up at the beach, and then at the end of the story, it's it kind of resolves the. Um, a problem at yeah. the end. There's mm -hmm. a nice little uh, linkage for one part of the story to another. So I like that part of it. Mm. All right, cool. Um, what the guys have discussed there is uh, the stuff I enjoyed. The thing that I found a wee bit, wee bit peculiar was Matt Smith, Dr. Juggling. I remember, you know, I remember him wearing the, the fez and all that, but I yeah. guess... It, it's, ex it's exactly the kind of thing he would think he would be cool at and, yeah. and would not, not be good at it at all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's always trying to be cool. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, you know, I, I guess he had to come up with something to, to uh, audition for Diego's fear, so that's what he came up with. So, fair enough. Um, but, but, but as usual, both of these are spot on in this. And as I say, the the villain of the piece, the gentleman of the dice who feed on your life force when you, you know, wish for good luck or whatever. As, as, as I would say, interesting concept. And as, as well, as, there's no doubt a piece by the wee cameo by Alyssa Barman at the end um, wraps everything up in a nice thin bow. Yeah. And this little two-parter in the short trip range, which is technically a companion chronicle. Go figure. Nice little hour. If you want to waste your time. Go give it a listen, it might be worth your time, folks. All right, guys, what might portion of the cast anything else you want to bring up before we get the zippled and indie can for the week? Well, like everybody has said, it's really a pity that we lost Baxter. Yeah. Because, um, you know, it's it's been a great run of uh, box sets. I mean, they're very popular. That They had no idea. Remember, this all started with a Companion Chronicle a few years ago. 
So the mahogany models. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a shame too, because they, they, you know, they were probably planning on bringing in, uh, uh, Vastra at some point because they're in the same time period and that yeah. would have been really cool because we already had tracks and that was pretty cool. So yeah, it's just, that's all really a pity. That's a pity. Yeah. That's unfortunate. I think, um, it, they could continue sometimes with Jago and one-off stories or he, uh, where a doctor shows up and, and you just don't have I suppose so. Or something. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, occasionally you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to overdo it. But no, maybe one a year it, or something, you know. Yeah. 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 With, it, with multiple doctors. I mean, he could turn up with ones he hasn't met yet. So mm. that'd be cool. No, that's done. He, uh, that's for Benjamin's discretion if he wants to carry on with his, uh, his sidekick, you know, so, um, in, 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 in this in this time because of this you know it was a year after they faced the master mm. um how old are each character from the Jagon life for how old are they including ellie how old she is because uh because we we, because we don't uh we don't, in one story there was supposed to be that one of them had had a son yeah one had a son yeah and we don't we don't know if ellie ever got married was ever married or anything like that but I think they're all supposed to take place around the same time as the talents of Wang Chiang. So it's just basically they're they're pretty much the same age all the time. I don't really think mm. they've aged much in these stories, right? And and, and okay. their time period, you're probably right. You know, um, I think the only exception to that all might have been the two voyage ones with Colin Baker. Yeah, and it was interesting too that they were bored. At the beginning of this, they were both saying how bored they were, how nothing had happened lately for them. And so this was like a, this became an amusing diversion mm. for them. That's true. Yeah, fair point. I guess age is relative as well, so take your pick. I mean, well, I would yeah. guess all the stories take place within like a five-year period or something for these yeah, guys. Five, so give it a five-year period. They're, they're both probably in their late, uh, middle to late 50s running around. Very That's probably a good guess, yeah. Roughly, they're running about there. Yeah. Anything else, guys? Yeah. Well, Lightfoot always looked older than me than uh, Jago, at least five, ten years older. Maybe he's more healthier. <laughs> Maybe he drinks less Guinness. Anyone else, folks? Um, yeah, I like the doctor calling the uh, master a, a frenemy, and uh, uh, Lightfoot's like, "What? What, uh, what is this? I don't, I, what, I don't understand." He goes, "Don't worry, I'll explain it later." It's only language joke. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Oh jeez, yeah, that's something you always guarantee with Jago and Lightfoot is some great use of the English oh, language. You know what? Which, which one's the one with the sun? Is that Jago? Yes. Okay, if they really want to continue this, then it can always um, have his with son. Jago and son? Yeah, Jago and God son. Golden, you dirty old man. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they can do that. If they really want to continue the, uh, the franchise. Mm. I don't. I don't want to speak out of turn, but who says that they can't recast? They've been doing that a lot lately. They've got um, too soon after I, the death, man. Yeah, I think it's too way soon. Too, 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 too soon. soon. I agree, but uh, maybe if they give it two or three years, and I, I doubt, new... I doubt Sorry. Benjamin or uh, or Bowerman would want to would want to do it. They they just right. upset and um, because this has been their thing for for so many years, and like so I don't think they want to recast. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, okay. I, I was just putting out the idea out there. That's yeah. Right. I, w I still think though that probably uh, you know Chris Benjamin will sh or turn up every now and then and do a cameo on other stories or something. You know, yeah. like if they ever do get around to using Vaster, I'm sure they'll they might bump into him or be at his his, his uh, yeah. theater or something. Yeah, we'll, see what, or two. we'll see what happens there. Yeah, we might even have. How about, about Jago and Strax? <laughs> well, you mentioned that Strax one. We might need to try that one man, a few weeks down the road. That's quite a funny one. Oh, that I one. Already did it. That one. No, we have done it. Have we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I thought you'd do it anyway. Oh, all right. Because oh. you are a member. <laughs> okay. That's what, That's what you get when you drink. Yeah, I know. We and might that We might have done it on Brian's show, I think. It could have been. It could have been Brian's channel, yeah. Um, fair enough. All right. Is that us, guys? Mm hmm Well, I guess it's that time again. To hear this new song by Steve Williams called Mama, get your tongue out of my mouth because I'm kissing you goodbye. What? Uh, Brickleberry. <laughs> there you go. All right, guys. And on that happy note of uh, Ed Pussy. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> no, it's all Greek to me, all right? Uh, <laughs> 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 the Jago and Lightfoot Revival.
the late Trevor Baxter, and <clears throat> Christopher Benjamin. Big funny short trip, season seven, story three and four. Philip, what do you give us a ten minute? Because it's a final outing for one of the one of our best loved characters in the world of Doctor Who or Big Finish, I I'm gonna have to give it a, a positive final half. We'll call it dog call it, mate. Well said. Will, what say the number from NYC, mate? Yeah, I'm going to agree with Phil. I'm giving it a nine and a half. It's, one of, it's the saddest, the last ones. We both put them together. And uh, hopefully um, Big Finish will release the ones that hasn't been released yet. Yeah, but I, I, there's, uh, that was supposed to be in November. I, I, I assume they'll rush it sometime next year, all being well with everything. Uh, Timbo, what's the number of your mate? What do you reckon? Uh, it's a ten. It's, um, mm. it's very entertaining. It, it passes an hour quickly. And it's um, it's 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 a it's a great story. It's a lot of fun. You got two doctors. You got all this other stuff going on. And these guys are always entertaining with the way they talk. They banter back and forth. You know. So, yeah. Yeah. It's easy ten for me. It's probably yeah. the best short trip because it doesn't really feel like a short trip. It feels more like a CC. So there you go. All right. There you go. CC's all round. Ten out of ten from Techie Cars. Okay. And AJ, what's the number from Dan Under mate? Yeah, I'm gonna have to give it a ten too. It was just a brilliant story. It flowed. There was no low point. It was just perfect. All right. Good stuff, mate. And I'll complete the trifecta of 9.5 out of 10 this evening, kids. Uh, nothing major for the half point, just the fact that they went to the pub and had ginger beer. Waste. Waste of our evening. Well, you, you got to remember, maybe the doctor has different biological, maybe ginger beer is like hard liquor to him. Okay. No, he, no, he drank it in the, uh, the, the um, Android invasion, remember? Mm. Oh, yeah. And deep breath. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Have a whiskey and enjoy. So there you go, guys. I, I, it's unanimous. A great spectacular final outing chronologically anyway, recording-wise for Trevor Baxter and Christopher Benjamin as Jago and Lightfoot. And the Jago and Lightfoot, ironically, it was called a revival. It was the last one, but actually serendipity for you, I suppose. And we are done for another week. Um, and before we say adieu, it's just time to let you know what we're doing next week. We'll stick with the short trip range for one more week as we take a little trip with Sarah Sutton on the edge of the Time War. And Phil? Uh, the story is called A Heart on Both Sides. Was it on? What is it? A Heart on Both Sides? There you go, Phil. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and which features the Eighth Doctor with Nissa, as you said. There you go. So a wee half hour daddy for us. We've got no we've got a wee bit less homework this week, so the top and hopefully pay attention if they're falling asleep. And with that guys, we are done for the evening. Uh, to the panel, as always, thanks for your attendance, kids. Uh, please check out our regular buddies on the Wackety World of the YouTube. You've got the guys and dolls that are each assembled with their movies, TV shows, and audio head reviews. You've got Sammy Tardis Boy Radio. You've got Doctor Freedom and his news broadcasts and his Omega Fells, as well as the continuing adventures of Doctor Freedom and Eric. I, I'd, I'd see it as a script too, and story number three is underway. Um, and with that, we also have Johnny Boyd, Sammy Carter, uh, Mike Shannon and everything online. Like, share, comment, subscribe. We're getting hell on it here. And for the five of you to watch it, enjoy. We wish you all a safe and prosperous week. And we'll be seeing you. Take it easy, folks. We'll be seeing you. Lummy.